This is for the ethics review at Parker University. Uh, this is a continuation of the review of the licensing board rules. The fourth rule we're going to talk about is the requirement that you respond to complaints when the state board asks for a response. This again is an extremely simple rule and very easy to comply with, but for some reason doctors tend to ignore the uh, complaint process. Typically the first thing the state board will do when they receive a complaint, they may receive a complaint from a patient or a competitor or someone who has seen an advertisement or anybody else. Uh, they don't particularly look to see who the complaint came from and the process to file the complaint is a, extremely simple. There is no fee to uh, be paid. Once the state board receives a complaint, they have an obligation to investigate it. And usually the first step they will do is to send a letter to the doctor involved uh, asking for the doctor's explanation of what happened. Depending on the doctor's explanation, the board may then be in a position to very quickly uh, dismiss the complaint. Unfortunately, what happens is some doctors receive letters from the state board asking for a written response and the doctors fail to provide that response. Now in Texas, the response is required in 15 days. If for some reason you cannot provide a response in 15 days, contact the state board. Usually they will give it a reasonable extension of time if more time is needed. Now, certainly they're not going to give you six months to respond, but they may give you another week or two to make that response. Uh, the doctor is also required to cooperate with the board in its investigation. If they're requesting patient records or other information, the doctor needs to provide that to the state board as part of that response. Now, if the complaint is complicated at all, you need to be sure that you take the time to sit down and write a uh, coherent response to the complaint. Uh, the impression the board will have of you will depend on that response that you file. If it is full of typographical errors, poorly constructed sentences, poorly constructed paragraphs, poor organization, that will send a message and leave an impression with the board that maybe they need to look at the complaint more carefully. On the other hand, if you send a well thought out, well organized, well written response, the board will be more inclined to dismiss the complaint with uh, no further action on your part required. If a doctor fails to respond to the complaint, the board may pursue that failure as an independent ground for disciplinary action. That means that even if the patient or whoever filed the initial complaint was wrong, the doctor's conduct in that situation was not a violation of any of the rules, the state board can still discipline the doctor for failing to respond to the request of the state board. If nothing else, it's highly disrespectful to refuse to comply with a, a request from the state board. Uh, and they may take that very personally or be offended by that. And I think that tends to make them more likely to discipline the doctor and more likely to look for ways to discipline the doctor. So again, very, very simple rule. If you happen to receive a letter from the board notifying you that a complaint has been made and asking for your response, be sure you provide that response in writing in a timely manner and provide a professional looking response.